PSA 979. <sighs> Welcome in. Who are you supposed to be? <laughs> My shrink? Gosh. You'd think they'd stop assigning me to people by now. Hmm? Nothing. I just mean it doesn't change anything. I'm never getting out of here. So, why waste anyone's time? Oh, so I can feel better. Honey, I don't feel a thing. I'm completely numb. Look around. Not a window in sight. You think any of this is helping me? <laughs> Tell you what. Just for you. I'll bite. What do I call you? Mm. Nice name. Are you married? Oh, right. Too personal. I totally get it. <sighs> I see they gave you my file. You therapists love taking notes when people are talking instead of just listening. Oh no, I'm not offended. It's fine. No one ever really listened to me anyway. <laughs> oh. Sorry. I didn't get much sleep last night. This new person down the hall. I guess they still haven't come to terms with this whole situation. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's fair that Everyone goes to the same place just because they both did a bad thing. Good people do bad things too. I feel like there's a lot to consider. I mean, we all aren't evil, senseless people, right? We all make mistakes. I just feel like either way I'm still going to have to pay for mine. Hmm? Oh, you want to know what I did? The only thing I'm guilty of is loving the wrong person. Or right. I go back and forth with myself about it every day. Was I wrong? Should I have done it? <laughs> if I even regret it? I have nothing but time to think. If anything, I'll drive myself crazy. And I have more than enough time to do so. <laughs> Can I see them? The notes the last shrink took of me. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Wifey. <laughs> Inmate is extremely manipulative, shows signs of mental illness, has no remorse. You know this is bullshit, right? Goodness, I bet they're fun at parties. <laughs> you don't get that impression, right? Oh, okay. Well, I really hope you actually get to know me and not just have some preconceived opinions based off of some notes made by someone else who clearly didn't take a liking to me. <laughs> so, what do you want to know? Right, what I did. I told you. I fell in love. He is... I mean, was everything to me. He was everything that I wanted in a partner. Or so I thought. <laughs> you know how you meet someone and everything's perfect and then suddenly you get the rug pulled from underneath you. <laughs> the world, it feels like it's crashing down on you and you're just falling apart. 
And then one day you snap. You get tired of that heaviness, the weight of all your burdens. But I'm sure you want the details. So get comfortable. If you can, I mean, this isn't necessarily a place made for comfort. (laughs) More like torture, if anything. But back to the story. One day, I took a trip to see some friends. I found out there was something wrong health-wise, so I was in and out of the doctor's offices for months. Doctors couldn't really give me answers. Ironic, I know. The same people who go to school for, like, ever (laughs) couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. Pretty much everything they said sent me on a downward spiral, and it all became too much. You know, the pandemic, life, everything. So I took a trip. I realized life was too short, that I wasn't living, and... For the very first time, I wanted to live, really live, because prior to that, I was just existing. I'm sure it's obvious, but I didn't really have a good childhood, didn't have a lot of money. My parents, they hated each other. We don't really talk, never really did, but anyways... I spent that time in my life just hoping that once I was older, I could finally be happy. (laughs) I had a plan, a plan to get my dream life, a life that would actually make me happy. So as early as I could, I started working. I skipped the part where I was actually supposed to be a kid. (laughs) You know, the parties, the fun, times you take for granted. All so I could make sure I had enough money to take care of what I really wanted. A family, a good one, like the ones you see on TV. But if I'm honest, I just wanted someone to love me. (sighs) And that's where he comes in. After thinking about all of that, I was completely lost. I spent all night just thinking about everything I hadn't done. I mean, I was a 20-year-old virgin. (sighs) There was no rush or anything, but I definitely felt behind compared to my peers. You know, everyone usually gets that kind of stuff over with in high school. Prom night and all of that. So anyways, one day I went to the beach, and I sat there all day just thinking. One thing led to another, and I might have downloaded some dating apps, started swiping. (laughs) You know, he was different. Not my usual. I'll spare you the details of that, but let's just say I ended up at his place. And on the way over there, I was terrified. I mean, he was a stranger. He could have been a serial killer. I kept asking myself, what was I doing? Honestly, I don't know how people do it. How do you just meet a stranger and undress yourself in front of them? It's just, it's mind boggling to me, but I did it. Ah, it was a risk. I never took risks before. I had so much anxiety, and for some reason, when I saw him, everything went quiet. I felt calm. Like I already knew him. Like maybe in a past life or something that exists. I don't know, it was just intense. Anyways, I got in his room, and he was asking me a bunch of questions, small talk. And the more he talked, the more weirded out I got. Not by anything he was saying, but just the simple fact that in my head, I knew I didn't know him, but for some reason I genuinely felt like I did. 
After a while, he got in bed and put his arm out, asking me to come. I mean, I'm not an idiot. I knew that meant cuddle, but I had never cuddled before. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? I mean, he's not the first guy that I had an encounter with. I had exes and all that. We just never did anything. They all cheated, so that's another story. Right before I laid my head on his chest, I asked him what we were doing. I mean, I knew what I was there for, but usually when I see this kind of thing, a hookup, um, in a movie, it's usually just two people talking and, for lack of better words, ripping each other's clothes off as soon as you walk through the door. <laughs> but I laid on his chest and he asked if he could kiss me. And I said, yes. And in that moment, I knew he was different. For sure. It, it felt right. That kiss. The best way to describe what it felt like was missing someone you really love. Like a soldier who's been at war for a really, really long time. Finally reuniting with his lover. <laughs> There was something there, and I still can't put my finger on it. From there, I'm sure you can assume what happened. He was gentle with me, rough, but he made sure I was okay the entire time. <laughs> it was the perfect first. <sighs> Nothing, I'm, I'm fine. I don't know why I get a little choked up talking about it. <sighs> I guess if I could have that night with him forever, I would have. Instead, I was trying to recreate a feeling I just couldn't get back. <laughs> I mean... That night was the closest thing to love that I had ever felt. Even afterwards, we just talked and held each other. It was weird. A couple months later, I reached out to him, telling him that I wanted to see where things went. And he agreed. It was all downhill from there. The beginning of a relationship is supposed to be happy and fun. What do they call it? Ah, yes. The honeymoon phase. <laughs> we had one night. Ever since, we just fight. Despite him saying that he wanted to be with me, he never actually put any effort. He just changed his mind when he pleased. <laughs> hmm? How did that make me feel? Not good? <sighs> Sorry. If I'm honest, it made me feel like a kid again. A little girl who had to beg for love. Like I wasn't worthy of the things that everyone gets automatically in life. I mean, I never had a chance. So, finally meeting someone who could give me that feeling... I spent years trying to get it back. Every attempt made me feel like a failure. I tried so hard to make him love me. I'd cook, I'd clean, ask him about his day, be there when things got hard for him. I did everything. All I wanted was for him to be there for me, you know, reciprocate, just a little bit. I just always felt like if I stopped trying, I'd lose him. It's really hard to chase someone who keeps running though, right? <laughs> Looking back, I don't think I ever really had him. I was never enough. Not for him, 
not for anybody. <laughs> and the messed up part was that I told him all this. <laughs> How everything was making me feel. You know, I put my pride to the side. There was no ego there. I was at my lowest. And I showed him that. Every part of me, even the worst ones, he saw it and he just didn't care. <laughs> he didn't love me. <laughs> he didn't even like me. <laughs> so what do you do? Hmm? What do you do when you fall for someone so cruel? Do you let them hurt someone else? Do you let them take everything you gave them and give it to someone new? Hmm? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm all right. But now that I've told you everything, you understand why I did what I did now, right? Right. Your opinion doesn't matter when you can't change the past. <laughs> what if I told you it did? You know what? I'm going to get a little closer. <sighs> Better. So, now that you know everything... Do you think I deserve to be in here? Hmm? You think I'm a bad person? I mean, I know what I did was bad. But like I said, I was doomed from the beginning. Gosh, it's... It's been so hard being in here. All alone. No one to touch. No one to talk to, except you and the guards. <laughs> I feel like I'm so needy now. Like, I need physical touch. <sighs> What's that? Why haven't I handled it? I mean, being in here doesn't really put me in the mood. <laughs> I need help. That's your job, isn't it? To help me. So can you? Please? Can you help me? What if I get on my knees? Like this. Would you still say no to me? I can be good. Mm-hmm. I can be a good girl. Please. Please. Let me show you how good I can be. <laughs> <laughs> 